3.34 on a Wednesday afternoon. Appreciate your company. Warm one outside, 32.3 degrees. We're live from Studio Lumo SA, powered by Lumo Energy. Just a reminder, after 4 o'clock, Rucci pulls apart the most powerful people in football. The paper's got the top 50. Rooch has done his top 10, and he's lining a few others up. Matthew Nix is about to join us. If you have a question, jump on the text line, courtesy of Maunteen Hyundai Cheltenham, 0427154166. It's always an enjoyable chat. Matthew joins us now. Hello, Nixie. Hi, guys. I'm, I'm glad I'm not on later this afternoon with Rooch segment. <laughs> you might, a different one, isn't it? You, might, you might be in his top 10, <laughs> eh? <laughs> no, it couldn't possibly be. Hey, Nixie, thanks no, this for doing this. You might change everything, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. No, I'll stay out of that one. Right we yeah. can have a chat now. Right well, let's jump into it. You're doing the media rounds at the moment, mm. and we appreciate it. Uh, your forward line's disappearing. Uh, all the hard work over summer. Mm. We know the fate of Riley Thilthorpe. Where's Tex at at the moment? Is he likely to play? Yeah, he won't play, unfortunately. Oh. We, um, Yeah, not, not quite what we're after today, and... Um, there won't be a risk taken with that, but I mean, I, it's interesting the language you use. But we're not falling apart by any means. But it's obviously not ideal when you lose the experience mm. of Tex and and also, uh, you know, probably where we saw Riley's pre-season at it was it was one of the best I've seen. He'd really taken uh, you know some huge steps with his game. So we were excited to sort of get you know hit the first round and and get into the season and see where things are at. But you know things happen and then. Um, you know, that disappointment turns into an opportunity for someone else. So we've got, you know, a few guys that are, are now ready to step up and take their opportunity. Um, probably guys that haven't necessarily got it in the past when maybe they deserved, um, you know, a look. Um, so we'll go in with a different forward line, but, but by no means one that we're, you know, that we're disappointed with. We'll be really pleased. The guys have been going hard all pre-season. So we're actually excited about what we can take up there and, and take on the the, um, the Gold Coast with. So you'll have Darcy Fogarty. We know that. It looked from the outside that Chris Burgess would come in, replacing Riley Thilthorpe. I'm not sure if that's right. Um, now with Tex out, do, would it be Burgess and Gallant, or do you look at the opposition in the Suns, and do you try and do something a little smaller? Yeah, we well, both Burgess and Gallant are more than likely, and we've trained our main session today, they're more than likely to be the two that come mm. in. Um, as we say, you, you know, we've got a Ruckman, a second Ruckman that we need to bring in. Lockie Gallant has done that and pinched for us. In fact, he's, he's done it in a showdown previously and, and performed really well. But Burgess is probably the one, you know, well, not probably, he's the guy that we, we brought to the club who can play a number of different roles. Um, you know, he's a, he's a goal-kicking forward, um, but can and, and has played a lot of Ruck in, in, over his career. So, you know, he'll fit in really nicely. He he deserves the opportunity. I think since day one of arriving at the club, he's, he's earned the respect of our entire group. And so I think the group's really excited about what he'll bring. Matthew, explain to us what's happened to Taylor Walker and what the prognosis is. Well, he basically just tweaked his back. And so, mm. um, you know, as you do around the house, he's he's picked up one of the one of the young ones and and he's, he's strained his back. And it probably hasn't progressed quite as well as we'd like it to. Mm. Um you know, he had a, a a bit of a session today where he wasn't involved in the training, but he got moving, and we just didn't quite have it to where we needed it. Um, unfortunately, we, mm. you know, we now start to look at the season proper and go, well, there are 23 rounds. Um, you know, we don't want to get it wrong in round one, push him too hard, and then you know, all of a sudden it's a it's a longer time out of the game. So we won't take a risk with it. Um, he'll now start to prepare. You know, we go into a six day break. Uh, into Geelong and then yep. you know another short break we head over to Perth um, and so you don't you don't want to get ahead of yourself too far but we definitely block out the year and, and look at you know what challenges we have one after the other and so, so no risk taken on this one and, and we believe we've got the guys ready to step up so okay. we'll still go over with confidence let's look at some of the positives I know you love this young man uh when Jake Saligo came on the other day he was so clean uh, he is a very classy young man has he done enough to be there this week well, he'll definitely be there. It's just in what, which capacity. I mean, we still haven't locked away. You know, there's a sub role that uh, he played last week. Um, yeah, in a way, we, it wasn't actually the rules, but we played it that way. And as you said, he impacted the game. He was you know, to come on fresh and perform the way he did in around the footy. He's he's a huge part of our future. You know, the footy club. We've shown that 
by contracting him the way that we have. Um, and now it's just the timing of he, he's come off a well quite a you know quite a serious ankle uh, injury where you know he spent a number of weeks out. He, he ultimate professional got himself right, and he's now saying, well, "Look, I'm ready." It's just whether that's a full game uh, or whether that's maybe us looking at, at bringing bring him in and trying to add some impact at some point throughout. Nick, see a lot of texts coming through for you on the text line, courtesy of Morn Team, 0427154166. We'll try to get as many as we can. This one says, uh, and we've got Crow supporters all around the country here. Nixie, uh, Will Powell killed Richmond from halfback last week. How do you deal with him? That's Matt in Brisbane, Crow's man. <laughs> well, there's a lot more than Will Powell, but he's a, <laughs> he's a great player and a very aggressive player. Um, you know, they like to really t- attack the game off a halfback, so... You know, we'll have our work cut out there if we don't get our game right. Um, I mean, there's a couple other players we could talk about. You know, Matt Rowe, I guess, mm. being one of them. Mm. When you, you have a player having 20 clearances mm. and and their entire midfield doing, or, or I guess, having their own way in the first half, it, it does make it hard. So this, this is a team that have historically been a very strong stoppage side. Um it hasn't necessarily been what's moved the needle for them. We, it hasn't won them games, but they're, they're, they're a strong team as far as scoring from stoppage. So we, we'll need to have our A game in around that. So we're starting to you know, look at you know, what's Jordan Dawson, how's he going to lead that midfield group with Crouchy and Laird in there and Barry. Um, we're confident our guys performed really well through the preseason, and but this is a this is a big big challenge. And again, there's there's a lot more. You could go their forward line mm. and talk about King and Lacocious and. Um, yeah, unfortunately, their list is it's never ending as far as the talent goes. Um, but then it's a team game, so we'll, we'll go over there and and hopefully we can we can play as a team and get the job done. So, Matty, when you watch a side perform as well as the Gold Coast did, and we don't know how good or bad Richmond will be, do you second guess what you're doing or do you make adjustments? Yeah, great question. I mean, it, it, it's a really hard one, especially into round one. You, mm. You've got to be careful you don't put too much time in because we do. You have you know you have weeks coming in. We, we, we had a buy on the weekend, so if you look too much at the opposition, you, you know, there can be times maybe in the past that you know as a young coach I, I have done that or we've done that. But at this point, I think feel like we've learned. We know when we play our best footy, we we do focus on ourselves. We we have we have utmost respect for our opponents. We. We look at ways may, you know, where we might be able to expose them more so, but we also respect what you know who we're up against. And last week they didn't do a lot wrong, um, mm. you know, in that first half. But there was a patch there where Richmond were able to find their way back in. We had a really good look through that. What was the difference? And so we'll, you know, we'll take a bit of that, um, but we'll also be really focusing on what we do well and making sure we bring that. Uh, Round one, it brought up a few different or interesting examples. Did you have a look at the Nathan Broad situation? And have you spoken to your defenders about that? Are you crystal clear about keeping the ball in play? Yeah, look, there's a a fair bit of the, I mean, the rules, and we're always adjusting and changing. The ruck rules come up as well. And um, these are things that the AFL, they do a great job, the AFL, as far as keeping us up up Mm. to speed on what these rules are. You know, they provide vision and information, and we're, we're always going back and forth. In fact, I'd you know, I'd say this the last sort of six months has been the best we've had as far as correspondence goes mm-hmm. and, and just, just constant conversation around where, where's the game at. Um, you know, ultimately, we're, we're, we're all trying to put on you know, the best entertainment we can. We want the game to be close. We, you know, we want the game to be fast and dynamic and high scoring. And So I think as a coaching sort of fraternity, we all understand that. We also all want to win. You know, otherwise you're out of a job. So, mm. the, you know, we're well, always going we'll to get to that. Rules. We'll get to that, your yeah. job. <laughs> so, Matthew, everything, yeah, that, so it, everything you've done has been to a strategic plan. The rebuild, the rebuild of not only the list but the game. We saw where you were strong on defence at the beginning, always strong on contested footy. What's the next step in what you call our game? Yeah, it's the consistency, Rich. It's, it's being able to do it week in, week out. It's... It's probably the key moments. It's it's our ability as a... I mean, we're, we're still a young group. Um, you know, on paper, both both age as well as games played and probably more importantly than that, actually, it's games played together. Mm. And we, we, we talk about that being the cohesion. You know, we do a lot of work in around that. You know, the best sides in the game, Collingwood last year, were the, you know, had the highest cohesion of, of any team in the competition. Um they played a lot of footy together and they learned through through doing that. They learned through mistakes. 
they learn through getting it right, probably more importantly. Um, so so we, we've tried to find that. We're, we're training through the off-season and the pre-season on, on building that connection, building an understanding of, of the game and when those key moments show themselves, our ability to finish it off and, and really get it done. Um, this this pre-season has been our best uh, up to this point. You know, our players... Our players have driven the standard. They've they've educated each other around game plan. You know, when you when you're coming four or five years in, it's actually the players that drive it. In the first couple of years, it, it's got to be coach driven because yep. it's new. Yep. It's, you know, it's not every, everyone knows it. Whereas this year, mm. it's quite rewarding as a coach or coaches to to be a part of it when you see your team start to lead each other, and mm. and that's the spot we're in. Um, doesn't guarantee anything, unfortunately, because mm. the games. It's so competitive. It's so even. Um, you need a bit of luck, and, and you've got to earn the right to play finals. You know, we've we've still got to do a lot of work to to get there. But but we got a lot right in this preseason, so we're excited about round one. The text line is zero four two seven one five four one double six. Let's jump into a few more. This is from Rich from Ridgehaven. He says, "Hey Nixie, keep up the great work, mate. How is the seed going, Paul Seedsman? Is he on the mend? Is he still floating around the club?" Yeah, Cedo's. Well, I saw Cedo uh, actually within the last three or four days. Caught up, he was in the club, uh, popped in. It's really great to see him when he does come in. He's um, look, he's going well. He's he's still working through a number of challenges. Um, I know he's doing a little bit around the place as far as just coming in and, and getting amongst it, more so just for his own sanity to keep himself going and you know get amongst the group. It's amazing how much you miss footy when mm. when footy finishes up, but. Um, no, he was in good spirits. Uh, he's, he's a, I mean, for those who, who've had, a, I guess, the pleasure of meeting Cedo, he is a, he's a funny character. He doesn't mind a chat. Um, so as long as you're, you're happy to spend a, a good half an hour, have, you know, two in the fat with him, then uh, he's good value. But it was really good to see him around the place. But as I said, there's, there's still things that he's working through at the moment. Um, and I think they'll be ongoing. We wish him all the best. Here's another one from Daniel. Uh, can you ask Nick see if he takes more out of the Gold Coast first half last week or the way the Tigers stopped them in the second half? Uh, well, we, we'd probably say we took more out of the, when the Tigers were able to get their game going. Mm. Um, you know, you obviously have, you, you watch that first half and, and the Gold Coast were very, very good. Uh, but Richmond really found their game in the second half. It, it probably took them a half to get going. And, and that, you know, sometimes you can find that, as I mentioned before, when you have a new coach come in, there can be a little bit more detail that, that maybe takes the focus, but not taking anything away from Gold Coast. So they were brilliant in that first half. But, yeah, we looked at mm. probably the third and went through, you know, what, what is capable, what, you know, what, what are the possibilities? You know, where's the upside? How can we possibly expose, you know, a good side in the Gold Coast? Matthew, there's a great line from Craig McRae, the Collingwood Premiership coach, at the weekend where he says, we thought we'd improved over the summer. We're now realising everyone else has improved, perhaps even more. So where yeah. is Adelaide significantly going to be better so that we can actually say this is a team that's worked hard to get to be a finals contender and should be in the finals? Yeah, and, and Craig's more spot on. We've, you, know, you don't know until you actually get into the mm. real deal. And that's why we're all a little bit excited at the moment. There's nerves, good nerves, because um, you just don't know. You don't, even from last week, not, not playing and watching eight of the teams play. The, the game's an easier game on the telly, and we all yeah. know that. It's it's a lot tougher when you're down at ground level and, and the bodies are crashing into each other. So it's hard to tell where you're at. We'll, we'll know after this weekend, and it may be, you know, we, we come out and put our best performance out there and, and it gets us what we're after. It might be that our best performance doesn't and it'll give us a bit of a reality check on, mm. on our improvement. Um, but in saying that, the areas we have worked on, we, you know, we've, if you look at last year, we've, one of our weapons was the, the ability to score. You know, yep. we've got a forward line that if we give an opportunity to them, um, they're quite clinical in front of goal and that, that forward line looks a little bit different in round one mm. with, with, with Tex out, but We've still got, you know, the, I guess the same bones up there, but our, our work on is the, the score against. So our ability to recover when we need to and we're in trouble and, and actually stop the opposition scoring. Mm. Um, we've done a lot of work on the, in the off-season. All right, Nixie, it, watch. strap yourself in, Maybe not. Here we go. Here's the elephant in the room. Here we go. <laughs> 
You know what's coming. I thought there was one coming. Yeah, there's one coming. It's not Matt Crouch this year, all right? Okay, he's going along nicely, isn't he? <laughs> no, he's going very Beautiful. well. Beautiful. All right, we've heard from Tim Silvers. We've spoken to him. We've spoken to John Olsen. They love you. You've been phrased as being a generational coach, a career coach, doing all the right things. We've heard you say how you want to be at Adelaide. We've heard both the four mentioned gentlemen say that meaningful discussions have started. This was over three weeks ago in regards to your coaching tenure. Why can't you find common ground? Because if you see the texts that come through, now we have these conspiracy theories that they're going to wait till round four in case you're zero and four. Wouldn't it be better to get it away? What can't you agree on? Yeah, it might have been the fact that I asked for 20 years um, <laughs> yes. in the contract, but I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, no, look, we, I, it hasn't really been the focus. I know that you're going to say, oh, come on, Matthew, that's not true. It, it hasn't. Uh, my... We've been locked in on how how do we get ourselves right for round one. That, that's been the priority. Um, but if, Matty, if I can season. jump in, I understand that. Um, but if you're having meaningful discussions for three weeks, it must be important. Otherwise, you wouldn't. They wouldn't use the word meaningful. I mean, having a coach locked well, away it, is important. Yeah, be patient. We'll, we'll be we'll be fine. So uh, what, what I can say to you is, I'm really comfortable. I'm really confident that both I and you know, the club and I are on the same page. Um, and that, uh, you know, hopefully something we can have done soon, which will just take away the noise and mm. allow us to focus on footy. Not that we're not. I mean, my, my focus is all about heading up to the Gold Coast and beating them. Um, it's, it, at the moment, the contract is really not an issue, guys. Do, do we have to relive how this all began? Do we have to have the barbecue so you can sort out term <laughs> and dollars? Is that the way to do this? <laughs> I want Roots to come in and barter for you. You going to come and help me, Rich? No, I, I don't think there'll be any need for that. I, um, I, I've said all the way along that I, I think we've got the right people at this footy club and the right people are who I'm speaking with at the moment. And so I've got no doubt we'll work our way through that. So mm. is there a sticking point? No, there's not. There's no. not. Would you be happy if you still weren't signed come round 10? Ooh. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, um, I understand there'd be a lot of noise around that, but I, mm. and I don't think that's something we're going to see either. Nixie, we need to go to break. Right. We love chatting to you. Let's give you a couple of really quick, easy ones. Uh, who's going to be the biggest improver? I know everyone was saying it was Riley Philthorpe because of his summer. Mm. Who should we look out for? Who's an up-and-comer? Oh, the, the one that's front of mind right at this point, and, and there's a lot of guys that have improved, but Barry's the one that I think you know had a, a strong year uh, you know, a couple of years ago, probably didn't have his best one last year or maybe didn't get the opportunity, but he's, he's pre-season. I think he's found another a level on his game. Who was that? Uh, Sam Berry. Sam Berry. Yeah, he's looked sharp. A hey, quick question that's come in on the text line again. We love letting the supporters have their say. Can you ask Nixie if he thinks the teams that played round zero or opening round have a leg up, having two buys in the year and especially this week, Crows first up playing Gold Coast second up? Yeah, it's, it's one that I've actually discussed with the AFL. Um, as I mentioned, that they've been really open to talk through why, the, the reasons why. You know, it's about growing the game and understanding the East Coast. Um, I, I actually don't know wh whether it's an, mm. an advantage. I don't think we'll find that out until maybe mid-season. And as you start seeing these teams that have played in the opening round, um, you know, getting their buy in round five, I, I questioned a little bit of it about, you know, where's our two buys for the season? Mm considering Geelong and, you know, sorry, Collingwood and Sydney will get a, a buy in round five and, yeah. and 11 or 12. But, but again, does that, is it a, you know, is it positive for them? Is it something that's going to help mm. them? We don't know at this point. So it'll be one we'll have to wait and see. Um, we're looking at it as a positive. We, we got to have a look at our opposition last week. You know, they've, they've had a, another game under their belt before we get a look. Some might see that as a positive, but we're, we'll go up there yeah. feeling pretty confident. Matthew, really appreciate your time today. We genuinely wish you all the very best for the season. We love it when Adelaide's going well and Port Adelaide's going well and South Australia's up and about. So have a cracking season. We'll speak to you again throughout the year. No, I appreciate it, guys. It's nice to see footy's back. We Get the barbecue chat. happening, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. uh, good on we'll you, do. Nixie. We appreciate it. Uh, need to go to a break, Roach. We'll try and dissect that. Mm. Uh, we're going to have about a minute and a half before we go to the news uh, after the break. Um Happy with that answer? There's no issue? Yeah, but we knew there was no issue, but why isn't it done? Mm, There's no weird. issue. Do it's it. A bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. All righty. You can have your say. Send a text now. Uh, 0427 154 166.